All right, this is OPEX Mixed Modal Pain, energy system training on the assault rower. Uh, that sounds like a lot. Um, so to make it simple, we're using the rower and we're doing energy system training. Why use mixed modal inside of this? Well, for the past 20 years, to be completely honest, just people have been doing it. Um, and that's the main reason. So because it came into existence and we practiced a whole bunch of these different things, and that it's been in the fitness um, prescription for about 20 years and the practice of and the implementation and just trying to figure it out, then we're gonna do it. We're gonna add it to the rower and put it as a part of energy system training. Now, because I sound somewhat loose on it, it also should make you realize we don't have the, like, you know, you may have seen in Gain Pain Sustain, it looks like we got answers and we're pretty tight with the rest and recovery and the implementation. It looks pretty tight, right? Well, mixed modal, we'll st we're still learning a whole lot of things around it. Um, but I'm going to try to give you as simple as possible a way to experiment with it and practice it and get somewhat of a, uh, a really powerful dose response of mixing all these things together and getting some effect by using the rower inside of that. <clears throat> so you largely heard there in my description, what is mixed modal? Mixed modal is you're trying to do a whole bunch of things at one time. Generally, it's the practice of rounding out your fitness by trying to get good at, at all of these things, which is somewhat forms of resistance, some kinds of gymnastics activity, and some form of cyclical activity, and putting it all together and getting really good at multiple different time domains and effort within all those mixes, right? So you can even see, even in the language of explaining it is a lot, mix mole is a lot, because you can imagine all different kinds of weights, all different kinds of gymnastic scenarios, and all different kinds of cyclical activities, and all the different variations that you can do for that, okay? So we're doing mixed modal basically because it exists, and what is mixed modal? It's trying to get good a whole bunch of different things in broad concepts of how you express those in fitness. We still have to review though where pain comes in, and why you don't see gain as a part of OPEX mixed modal gain for the rower? Well, remember that mixed modal is you're mixing a whole bunch of things. And remember in gain, the whole context of gain is to do the most amount of work in the shortest period of time. So you can't put a lot of different things in in order to get a whole bunch of work, right? So just imagine that doing a bunch of uh, weight lifting man maneuvers and doing a whole bunch of uh, gymnastics maneuvers and then doing the assault rower and trying to get a whole bunch. You can see now we're up to like 30, 40, 50 seconds of total work. So remember OPEX gain is in a very short, maybe eight, 12, 15 second window. Therefore only one thing, one modality can be used inside of gain. So that's why you don't see OPEX mixed modal gain because it actually doesn't exist because you can't put a whole bunch of mixed modalities in a short period of time. But what we can do is pain. And the same reason we do pain as we did pain otherwise. To get a big metabolic response, to maybe do a stress adaptation to the particular kind of modalities that we're working with, and to maybe, maybe get a little boost in the aerobic system based upon the exposure to that, okay? Now there's gonna be some differences in the training of this. The whole concept of training mixed modal pain is not actually, we're not gonna wrap like a scientific method of testing and retesting around that. What we wanna do is just, to, is just to focus on trying to get the dose response for the two weeks in which we're gonna implement this, right? Knowing that the reasons why we're going about it is the same way. Theoretically, this is why we're only doing it for two weeks and twice a week, possibly for that. When you mix modalities together, you get, let's call it, I'm not gonna say a better, but a more robust response of effort for the 60 seconds when you mix modalities together, as opposed to when you only did 60 seconds with one machine. So this will explain why the recovery periods are longer, why we're only doing it for two weeks, why we're not doing a test retest scenario, is that when you mix modalities together for 60 seconds to be reductionist on it, and you were to compare that work and recovery to only 60 seconds on a cyclical machine, then you're gonna get a bigger, more robust response with this guy, okay? So if you do, as an example, power clean, burpees, and rowing for 60 seconds at a really hard effort, right, to get a metabolic response, and we were to take 1,000 subjects and compare that response to 1,000 people that were capable of performing both that and rowing, and they did rowing for 60 seconds, the recovery would re be required more and more for the mixed modal activity, okay? So you can see that the possibility of power and effort that goes into the 60 seconds is higher. Now, I said possibility, 
because there's requirements that people need to have in order to express this, okay? So the, most, the best rendition of this, like you may have seen with energy system training on the assault bike, is to do power cleans, burpees, followed by the bike. That was the bike, we're gonna do the same thing, power clean, burpees, followed by the row to get up to 60 seconds. And I'll come back to exactly how you put that together, but the prerequisites for this is that you have to be strong enough and you have to be, let's call it, have enough strength, speed, as well as dot, dot, dot. I would love for you to have practiced OPEX gain, OPEX sustain, and OPEX pain on the rower alone for months and months and months prior to implementing this. So although you may see this like, oh, this is interesting, I'm at the end of the videos, mixed modal pain, seems more exciting, you know, put the brakes on it, come back and review this and to try to implement it. After six months, you know, a minimum of trying to go through OPEX gain, pain, and sustain on the rower alone, okay? Now you come back to this. Now ask yourself the question, am I strong enough to do this? And do I have the capability of doing what's called strength speed? And I'm not gonna be super long on this, but if you don't snatch and clean and jerk regularly, it's probably not even worth your time to practice this. I'll be completely honest. We've tried numerous different ways of getting the best response, measured physiologically as well, of what we would call like pure strength lifts and a bunch of different modalities. Nothing works as well as being able to do what we'll call in here a strength speed activity followed by a gymnastics activity, followed by the rower to get the best response. Therefore, you can say, well, why not just do a kettlebell swing and a pull-up and then do rowing afterwards? We've tried thousands of iterations of this, so I'm just saving you a whole bunch of time and effort and possible injury by just saying this is the best way to do it. And in order to do this, you have to be, have enough absolute strength and strength speed experience. So if you, when I say clean and jerk and snatch and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to do that, I'm not technically proficient, then that's okay. You just won't be able to perform this at the highest amount of effort. But I'm doing that to set people up for success. So to recap, to be super clear, get a lot of OPEX gain, pain and sustain practice alone on the ear rower. I'm talking like months and months and months of it. Then come back and say, am I strong enough and do I have enough strength speed? And then if you do have that in practice, by all means, give this a go. Two times a week for two weeks, do it a couple times a year and see what comes from it, okay? But the whole intention of this is to really just to de uh, devote as much opportunity to doing pain in a mixed modal endeavor. That's the biggest intention. What is it gonna look like? Let's go back to that. Again, this is PC for power clean, followed by a burpee, followed by a row. Now, uh, this, looks, this says approximately 60 seconds because this is how you're going to put it together. For the total set, your time score is gonna be what you're gonna be trying to repeat each time. And the reason why we say approximately 60 seconds is that we wanna do power clean that's gonna roughly last you around 15 to 20 seconds, burpees that's gonna roughly last you 15 to 20 seconds, and then you're gonna row for about 20 seconds on the back end, okay? So this all added up may not perfectly add up to be exactly 60 seconds, so it's not a 60 second cap. You're gonna be doing a total amount of work here and here leaving it somewhat loose, and then doing 20 seconds to finish so that you can figure out what your total score is based upon time, okay? If you understand what a power clean is, then you'll understand this. It's about 55 to 75% of your 1RM. And you're gonna be doing that touch and go activity. If you don't understand what touch and go activity is, that also tells you about your prerequisite knowledge to be able to do this. Touch and go activity, power cleans. Soon as you finish those reps, around 15 to 20 seconds. For some that may be five reps, for some that may be nine. It depends upon what you can do in that amount of work in that period of time. Working at as high as effort as you can. Then you're gonna drop the bar, you're gonna do burpees as fast as possible in place for 15 to 20 seconds. For some that may be nine reps, for some that may be six, for some that may be 11, you know, it depends upon the amount of work you're gonna do in there. Then you're gonna finish with rowing for, for 20 seconds. So it's the power cleans in the reps and the burpee in the reps and the row that you're gonna to put together for 20 seconds, add it up to 60 seconds. You can see the constraints are not as tight on a cap of that. What your goal is to try to put as much work as possible into that period of time. Now you're still gonna remember your reps and you're still gonna remember your, sorry, you're gonna remember your reps for your power clean, you're gonna remember your reps for your burpee, you're gonna remember maybe the total distance completed on the rower, but you're just trying to get this big dose response for 60 seconds. You're gonna follow that up with eight minutes, and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this really easy, you know, constraints and put some guardrails on this to make it super easily, easily implementable. And you're gonna do three pieces 
on one day. That's going to be the workout. 60 seconds hard of the power clean, burpee, and row. We are going to be going pretty close to guns a-blazing, 95 to 97% effort. And the reason why we have this higher than what you've seen in past for pain or even gain is that the, remember that when you transition from a power clean to a burpee and then when you go from a burpee to get on the rower to get your feet in, locked in, and then just go as hard as possible, I'm sure you can understand you're going to get this little drop in power because of the transition between the efforts. So it's really important for you to be guns a-blazing going at it for the power clean immediately into the burpees, right? Going to the burpees over and over and over and over. 15 to 20 seconds is up. Boom, I jump on the rower. I have everything set up and ready to rock and roll and I just go guns a-blazing for 20 seconds, okay? So you can see that if I transition between these is going to be down, therefore my description is pretty close to 100%, right? It's not 100 all out for one minute because I'm training still, but you're pretty darn close to that. So you're gonna do that for 60 seconds, eight minutes rest. Why eight minutes as opposed to five? Remember what I talked about, the dose response of mixed modal versus cyclical alone. So power clean burpee row, more powerful than just row alone. Okay, now don't create any judgment to that, but just the practice of it, we'll recognize over time, this is why you need more of a rest. If you think eight minutes is way too long, you're probably not strong enough, you're probably not capable of technically doing this load effectively, and you need to go back and do a whole bunch of big review of OPEX gain, pain, and sustain only on the rower before you come back and do this. Anyone who does this really effectively, eight minutes is actually not enough, okay, for those who have experienced this. And for those who experience this and know what it feels like, it's not that nice. It's a really painful experience, but remember, the whole goal is not injury, is to get a big metabolic response from that. So it's pretty simple, um, and I've laid some pretty simple you know, constraints in here as to how to get the best effect for it and the movements that wrap around it. You do it twice a week for two weeks, and um, at 60 seconds for the total amount, eight minutes rest three times. So let's just add that up. You're gonna do three times one day, three times the other time of the week, and then another two threes the week after, so that's six one week, six the next, that's 12 total repeats of one minute of reel out effort. So I'm just saying that out loud so you can think, you know, well, how much effort is actually in that? That's 12 minutes of that high effort over a period of two weeks. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you're putting a, a huge amount of effort into a very small period of time when you, when you practice that, okay? So it may seem like I'm, it's not super clear on exactly how to do this, but if you, if, and, and that kind of just talks about how it's only saved for a select few, if you truly want to experience it. Um, and I almost feel obliged to be very careful of saying, no, it's much more open than that and anyone can do it. You can't. And when people have tried to do that, it actually has resulted in injury or the lack of the correct dose response. So if I want you to do it, I want you to do it really effectively and I want you to earn the right to be able to express it effectively. And there's only one way of going about doing it and that's going to be through this method. And that's power clean, burpee, followed by the row, up to 60 seconds, hard as possible, measure all the work you do, rest eight minutes, do it three times, press repeat on that sucker twice a week for two times, you know, for, four, for two weeks total, and you'll get yourself a fantastic mixed modal pain response. A recap on mixed modal pain, we talked about what mixed modal is, putting all these things together in a short period of time. Um, why do mixed modal pain? Same reason. You get a stress response, metabolic adaptation, aerobic booster possibly. The way you're going to do it, power clean, burpee and row to approximately 60 seconds, creating your score of that total time. Rest eight minutes, do it three times, two times a week for two weeks. Don't forget the prerequisite, you got to be strong enough. You got to have strength speed experience and I would hope you've done at least six months practice of OPEX gain, pain and sustain, you know, interspersed throughout because you're not doing pain the whole time if you remember, just to give you enough practice to be able to come here and do that. And so if you don't know what touch and go means, you don't know what clean means, etc., give it time, learn the skills and then come back and do it effectively. The effort, you're just below 100% because as I mentioned, mixed modal pain has a big more robust uh, response than just pain in itself. And, um, and there's also a reason for you to do this only a couple of times throughout the year based upon its effect.